Good afternoon, Southwest Florida. I'm Hannah Wallace. This Naples Herald Lunch Week is sponsored by Conditioned Air, the comfort people since 1962. This afternoon, we'll tell you about a homicide in Minnesota, a fire in Honolulu, and more. Today is Tuesday, July 18th, and this is the lunch break. An Australian woman who called 911 to report what she believed to be an active sexual assault was shot and killed by a Minneapolis police officer in a case that's left many relatives and neighbors searching for answers. Authorities have released no details about what led to the shooting of Justine Damon, a meditation teacher and bride-to-be who was killed late Saturday by an officer who reportedly fired his weapon from the passenger seat of a squad car. There were no known witnesses other than the two officers in the squad car, and a newspaper report said Damon was shot while standing alongside the car in her pajamas. The Hennepin County Medical Examiner's officer on Monday said that the woman died of a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Her death was ruled a homicide. For more on this story, visit leeherald.com. A railroad owner must pay $3.9 million to the family of a movie worker killed on a Georgia railroad trestle in 2014. A jury de decided Monday in civil verdict that found the company shared in the blame for the deadly freight train collision, even though the film crew was trespassing. The parents of Sarah Jones sued CSX Transportation in Chatham County State Court, saying that the railroad shared blame for their daughter's death. The 27-year-old camera assistant died in the crash February 20, 2014, during the first day of shooting Midnight Rider, an ill-fated movie about Greg Allman of the Allman Brothers Band. CSX plans to appeal the jury's decision, said Rob Doolittle, a spokesperson for the Jacksonville, Florida-based company. The film's director, Randall Miller, served a year in jail after pleading guilty to involuntary manslaughter and criminal trespassing charges. Jones's parents said CSX also failed to take precautions that could have averted the crash on the trestle spanning the Altamaha River near Jessup in southeast Georgia. For more on this story, visit NaplesHerald.com. Hundreds of older, high-rise apartment buildings in Honolulu aren't required to have sprinkler systems, but city officials are pushing for change in the wake of last week's deadly 26th floor blaze. Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell introduced a bill Monday that would require sprinklers in all high-rise buildings, regardless of when they were constructed. There are about 300 high-rises on Oahu that were built before 1975 law that made sprinkler systems mandatory in new structures, according to a survey conducted by the Honolulu Fire Department. The Marco Polo building that caught fire Friday was built in 1971. Caldwell's bill would require that all buildings taller than 75 feet to install sprinkler systems. All high-rise hotels in Honolulu were required to install fire sprinkler systems in 1983, and the requirement was extended to commercial high-rise buildings in 2001. But efforts to require the systems on high-rise residential buildings on the city and state level have failed in the past because of cost concerns. The Honolulu Fire Department said fire inspection reports about last week's fire are part of their investigation and cannot be immediately released. For the rest of this story, visit NaplesHerald.com. And that was the lunch break for today. I'm Hannah Wallace. The lunch break airs Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. right here at NaplesHerald.com. And don't forget to check out our morning report that also airs Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you right here tomorrow.